How do you feel about Derek Jeter rubbing your head? Do you believe it's superstitious or good luck or just for the fun of it? Well, you know, people, a lot of people have asked me, uh, actually in 96, I mean, this guy was a rookie. It's my first year here. I didn't know Derek Jeter that well. And uh, he didn't get a hit or two in, in the first game or two. And one day he walked by and uh, had his bat in his hand and he took my hat off and rubbed my head. And he got two or three hits. <laughs> Seven years later, he's got, uh, I guess, like 7,000 hits or something. I don't know. Well, when something happens like that, you got to good, keep a good thing going. That's exactly what Derek Jeter did throughout his career. They formed a very unique bond. Now, obviously, when the news of Zimmer's passing broke tonight, Jeter was at work playing against the A's. But post-game, he talked about Don Zimmer. It's, that's a tough one to swallow. I mean, it's, um, you know, everyone knows uh, how much Zim's meant to I mean, our organization, with baseball as a whole, and, and uh, you know, the thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Um, but uh, you know, it's that's tough news. I found out about halfway through the game, so it's it's uh, that's what I, that's what I'm. What to you? Well, I mean, Zim was around when I first came up. You know, he's he's someone that um, you know he taught me a lot about the game. He's he's been around. He's pretty much seen everything. You know, his stories, uh, his experiences. He was close to my family. He was good to my family, and uh, we miss him. Derek, what we remember most about him? Uh, just his his um, his attitude. He was always positive. You know, he liked to have fun. This could be a long season, so it's um, you know, that's what you'll miss. When was the last time you spoke to him? I read before surgery. Derek, guys, the connection. You rub his hand. Was that instant, or did that take a little time to? Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't, you know, he's always had his stomach in his head, so I don't know when that started. Yeah, I don't know if there's one. I mean, there's a lot. I sit here and talk to you for, for days about Zim, but um, yeah, it's a tough one. What are your thoughts on um, the, the day that he confronted Pedro? I mean, here's a 70-something-year-old coach doing Yeah, that. I mean, that was him. You know, he... He was a fighter, you know, he's, uh, he was intense. Um, so that, that, I think that exemplifies him, you know, he was, he was, he was, uh, he was into the game and, and uh, it was fun to be around. Derek, how does something like that spread through the clubhouse? Uh, I found out about halfway through. Uh, I don't know when anyone else found out. What were your emotions at that point when you did find out? Tough. I mean, you know, you know, he's, he's struggling a little bit, but it's tough. So I will miss. All right. So, Jack, earlier tonight, you talked about Zimmer and everybody has. It's kind of an incredible baseball resource. Imagine you're Derek Jeter as a rookie in 96. And you've got this guy who at the time had 48 years of professional baseball under his belt to sort of listen to and learn from. Absolutely. And they ended up being this odd couple, Bob. You had the hippest, coolest, one of the most handsome guys in New York and Derek Jeter. And then you had Don Zimmer, the aging coach who was nicknamed Popeye. But these two found a friendship and they became very close friends. We've shown the video of it, of Jeter rubbing Zimmer's head. But I think they found that bond because the bond was about baseball and fun, but it was also about competitiveness. We've already heard a couple people on this show talk about how Zimmer was a very competitive guy. So for all the fooling around that Jeter and Zimmer did, they were in this together to help the Yankees win. And you can see, by the way, Jeter was answering those questions very emotionally.